2012, an American director of the Division of Global Disease Detection from the Centers for Disease Control in the U.S. said that nodding syndrome was a condition that needed to be urgently addressed. Dr. Scott Dowell made the remarks at the first scientific conference on nodding syndrome in Uganda. We've been working for several years and we still don't have the answers. It is now almost two years on, but scientists haven't yet made a breakthrough in establishing the cause. However, the CDC team in Uganda has been assessing the people afflicted by the syndrome in the north. In May, a family of 10 from Lamour District was taken to the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. capital, Washington, D.C., to undergo genetic studies. The institute is the world's largest hospital in the field of clinical research. The family hails from a bomb village. The study wants to know whether there is any genetic correspondence eh, from the parents to the affected children. And why the other children have remained without the Nordic syndrome? And why have the grandchildren remained free, uh, healthy? The family returned on May 26. They took a lot of samples, like fluids, like uh, blood, and even brain tissue. An analysis is undergoing. In an article posted by Dr. Francis Collins, the NIH director on their website, the three teenage patients, ages 18, 17 and 13, underwent extensive medical testing, including detailed MRI imaging of their brains and overnight electroencephalography, which records electrical activity from brain waves. In addition, all members of the family underwent a range of medical tests. It is our prayer to God that out of the 10 people, we should get to know what is the problem and the drug itself. The nodding syndrome has been something that struck the medical profession and the knowledge of medicine in this particular region. But the most affected is the sufferer, the one carrying the strange mix of diseases, each of which manifests itself differently. Sufferers experience head nodding especially at the sight of cold food or cold weather. This is accompanied by cognitive impairment, delayed puberty and growth retardation, with most being malnourished and stunted. Investigations are going on in South Sudan and Tanzania, which are the other two countries known to have patients with the syndrome. Some causes have been ruled out like suspected consumption of red sorghum, consumption of baboon brain and absence of reported history of measles in South Sudan. Uganda has its fair share of suspicions. We realize that there is a very big difference between what the community perceives about the disease as compared uh, to the health workers. Some of them say, I think, the ghost. Some of them say, I think, some medicines have been put on here so it has catch the people of these areas where they not Because they are like, why is it concentrating in this, some of these areas and not in other areas? Yeah, some of them are saying maybe it is the effects of the bombs. While some people blame the relief food in the region, experts threw that out in prior investigations. In fact, dozens of hypotheses have been ruled out. However, there have been some suspected causes, like the onchocerciasis infection from the black fly, resident in many rivers surrounding the affected. Another narrow down has been vitamin B6 deficiency. That's interesting to us because low vitamin B6 in a rare circumstances can be associated with seizures, intractable seizures, very difficult to treat. And so that provides us some hope that if high doses of vitamin B6 are provided, perhaps that will help these children. Most scientists agree that the syndrome is a form of epilepsy with the nodes being caused by a special kind of seizure requiring anti-epileptic drugs. However, researchers haven't yet agreed on the best drug to prescribe to the patients. In Padaya district, the parents in this home did their own observations on the drugs and demanded that the hospital change them. Mm. This is what they were using in the past? Yeah. So this one was bad? Yeah. So this is better? Yeah. Okay. However, every patient reacts differently to a given drug. We don't yet understand what the underlying cause is and therefore we can't recommend the best treatment or prevent this disease in the long term. Nevertheless, preventative measures have been going on in the form of river dosing to reduce the population of the black fly. 
river dozing will continue until the black flies can no longer be detected. At Glue Regional Referral Hospital, research was done on the nodding behavior of one afflicted child for three months. They had acid in their bodies and we took all that process out of that patient. Child temporarily stopped nodding but got back the episodes after the three months elapsed. The researcher from Gula University, who is also a member of the National Task Force on Nodding Syndrome, says more studies are getting done. What is there in their blood? What is there in their skin? What is there in their... all the organs? Dr. Scott from CDC also has what he calls an interesting theory. Autoimmune disease. So some kinds of arthritis are caused by the immune system of the body attacking itself. And there are examples when those antibodies attack the brain and cause unusual brain syndrome. It's a good finding and we are happy that something has come. But there it leaves many questions to be answered. How does it cause the problem? One thought that we have, which we're interested in following up, is whether antibodies against perhaps Oncocerca might be attacking the brain and causing the nodding syndrome. Some members of the community continue to witness weird occurrences every day amongst the afflicted. When the hand move with chicks around, the child just pick and grab the, the chicks and start eating like that. I think it's becoming epidemic. The National Institutes of Health considers nodding syndrome a global threat. For now, though, the ongoing genetic study in Washington is what most are looking up to. Hopefully, the Ugandan child and the adult suffering from nodding syndrome will benefit from this in a future so near. Florence Aliba, NTV.